I have to admit that when I first opened Safari after upgrading to iOS 15, my first question was, wait, where's the address bar gone? And then my second question was, oh, okay, how do I change it back? But actually having been using Safari for a few days now to research this video, I've been won over by the new layout and several of the new features. So without further ado, here are my 10 tips for getting the most out of the new Safari. So first up, if I can't convince you about the new layout, you can easily toggle between the two views from within Safari by clicking on the font size icon in the bottom left corner of the window and choosing show top address bar. To switch back again, hit the font size icon again, and you'll now see the option to show a bottom address bar. Whilst we're in this menu, my second tip, which admittedly has been around before iOS, but I always feel has gone slightly on under the radar, is the ability to create a clean viewing experience by turning on reader mode. To do this, simply click on website settings and tap the option. I can also go one step further by again clicking on the font size icon and choosing dark mode, which is an absolute lifesaver on your eyes if, like me, you like to read on your phone before going to sleep. And you've got to admit that looking at this is a lot nicer on your eye than looking at this. Moving the address bar to the bottom of the screen has allowed Apple to implement a range of new features, but my favorite is probably the most simple, which is the ability to quickly switch between tabs by simply swiping left and right. Another big enhancement to Safari in iOS 15 is tab groups. You now have the ability to group tabs and name them. So here, if I click on the tab icon in the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see I have three tabs of my favorite sports websites. I can group these together by clicking on the middle button and choosing new tab group from three tabs. I'll give my new group a name and there we have it. I now have a sports tab containing all of my favorite sports websites. If I wanted to create more groups, say a news group, I could click back on the menu icon and this time choose new empty tab group. I'll name it news and now I can start adding my favorite news websites. I'll add the New York Times and then I'll click on the plus button to add the BBC. And there we go. Now I have a news and sports group, which I can switch between at any time by clicking on the tab icon and choosing one of them from the menu. If you had a lot of these groups and wanted to adjust the order in which they appear, click on edit and simply drag them into your preferred order. If you accidentally add a website to the wrong tab group, such as here, where I add the bleacher report to my news group rather than sport, long pressing on the X icon in the corner of the tab will give you the option to move it to another group. I'll choose sport and now the bleacher report has been added to my sports group. Long pressing on the X icon also gives you a few more options. We can sort our tabs in different ways and we can also copy the URL link should we want to share it or maybe paste it into a different browser. We can even go one better by clicking on the menu option, choosing edit, and then click on the little ellipsis icon next to one of our groups. Here we now have the option to copy the URL links for all the sites contained within our group. And if I switch over to notes and paste, you can see that there are all my links nicely sorted in a bulleted list. For sites that I rarely visit and I have no wish to save, I like to create a miscellaneous group. If this group starts to get quite cluttered, I can delete all of my open tabs in this group by long pressing on the tab icon in the corner of the screen. The long press gives me a raft of options, including the ability to delete all sites which will bring me back to the start page. You may have noticed that the long press on the tab button also brings up the option to open an incognito window, which creates a special private tab group, which I can then add additional sites to, all of which will be in incognito mode. To leave the private tab group again, press on the tab menu icon and either switch to a different group or open the start page. You can also get back to the start page at any time by swiping right across all of your tabs. So here in my sports group, if I keep swiping right past the last tab in the group, it brings me nicely back to my start screen. 
Tip number seven is the ability to customize your start page. At the bottom of the page, you'll find the edit button where you can decide what you want to see on the start screen. For instance, if you're not interested in seeing the privacy report, you can choose to remove it. And if you prefer to have your iCloud tabs higher up the page, you can click and drag to reorder your list. You can also choose a different background for your start page. You can click on the plus button to add your own photo, but I'll opt for this one provided by Apple. What you'll also see on this start screen are any links that have been shared with you. So now if I receive a link in a message such as this one from Rufus, the link will also be viewable directly from within Safari on my start page. What's really cool is that when I open the link at the top of the screen, I now have a shortcut back to the original message if I want to send a reply. With iOS 15, Apple has also added extensions to Safari. Extensions get their own category in the App Store where you can install them in the same way you would install a normal app. One of my favorites is AdGuard, which I covered in a previous video. With AdGuard enabled on any of my websites, I can click on the font size icon to toggle ads on and off by enabling and disabling content blockers. My final tip is the ability to copy text straight from an image in Safari. For example, here's an image from a famous quotes website. If I tap on the image, you can see I now have an additional option to show text, which allows me to select and copy the text from the image and either share it with someone or I can copy it into a note for safekeeping. So that is my 10 top tips for getting the most out of Safari. Visit the website for lots more tips on iOS and all your favorite apps. And if you found this video useful, I'd appreciate you giving me a like and hit subscribe for lots more quick tips like this one. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.